All right, we're still moving on in the muscular system. So we're on to the next topic, which is using your muscles as well as muscle fatigue. And okay, so you should know fatigue has to do with being tired. So how do you, how and why your muscles get tired and what can you do about it? So first we're gonna talk about using muscles. All right, so how do we use them? So we contract and relax muscles to generate movement. Remember, uh, one of the rules of skeletal muscles is they can only pull, never push, but they can contract and lengthen um, to allow all of those movements. All right, so the first main classification is to either classify something as isometric or plyometric. So isometric means your muscles are contracting, but they're not changing in length. So think about you're just being still. So like what? Like a plank. Okay, so your muscles are contracting um, or, you know, doing a push-up and you hold it. Okay, your muscles are still contracting, but um, there is no changing in length. They're not actually moving. And then plyometric is when you have muscle contraction with a lot of change in length of the muscle. So think about in this case, you're going to need to be doing large, fast movements. You got to be like jumping, running, jump rope is a great example, okay? So, or if you do clapping push-ups, yes, not me, but if you're someone who does clapping push-ups, that would be an example of a plyometric exercise. So, name an exercise that displays plyometric movement. Can you think of something? I gave a couple of examples. So, you could see here, so you could do burpees, Jumping rope burpees, those are terrible, right? Uh, anything where you think you're going to be jumping up, moving, right? Lots of movement for plyometric. All right, so now the next category um, involves looking at isometric, isotonic, isokinetic. Isometric still means the same thing. It's just used in two different categories. So isometric is still muscle contraction without a change in length. So think planking. Isotonic, though, is when there's the same tension. So iso means the same, but tonic has to do with tension. So it's you're kind of straining your joints and moving them, but the weight is constant. So it could be your own body weight. Think just a regular push-up, okay? So you are using the same weight, your body, and moving. You're going to have lengthening and shortening, okay? It could be doing an arm curl. So you're holding a constant weight in your hand, but you have muscles that are lengthening and shortening, right? It could be uh, when you're doing a bench press okay, or any other exercise with weight where simply what you're doing is moving. Um, so some of your muscles are shortening and some are lengthening um, at the same time, okay? And the muscles that lengthen are part of the eccentric contraction and the muscles that contract are the concentric contraction. So think contract, concentric. Concentric contraction, that's the um, muscle contracting. And then the eccentric part is the muscle lengthening, right? And then isokinetic, well, unless you, I don't know, become an Olympic athlete or something, which totally possible, but you're not going to be using this specialized uh, machine. Okay, so it's not something that's commonly used. So aside from knowing the difference between isometric, isotonic, and isokinetic, that's really the end of what you need to know about isokinetic. The focus is isometric versus plyometric and isometric versus isotonic. And then remember the two types of isotonic, eccentric and concentric. All right, so you could see here the difference between isotonic no movement, just holding it in position, holding that weight, not moving. And then you have, um, when you're doing isotonic, you're either doing this, moving your arm, um, flexing your, at your elbow or extending at your elbow. And when you're flexing at your elbow, you're um, shortening the biceps break eye. And then when you're extending your elbow, you are lengthening the biceps break eye. So the contraction, the shortening, that's concentric, and the lengthening is eccentric. So name an exercise that displays isotonic movement. A lot of examples. Okay, right? So constant weight 
but the muscles are lengthening and shortening. So remember, it's not, it wouldn't be a clapping push-up, but it's a regular push-up, a bench press. Anything where you're lifting weights is going to be isotonic. So what do you think a wall sit is an example of? Yes, that's a terrible thing. I'm not a fan of wall sits. Um, would it be isotonic, isometric, or plyometric? Well, think. Is it big, giant movements? No, get rid of plyometric, right? Now, is there movement? No. So then it could not be isotonic. It would have to be isometric. All right, so now uh, we'll talk about muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue is a decline in the muscle force over time. What causes muscle fatigue? Well, we get the most common cause, lactic acid buildup but also could be a result of not enough vitamins or ions like vitamin D or calcium. We could have some impaired blood flow. It could be related to our age. Um, also other health, health conditions uh, can cause you to experience muscle fatigue sooner. So things like cancer, obesity, and stroke are just a few of the examples. So how do you treat it? How do you prevent it? So first, stretch. So stretching is not just something that somebody tells you to do. It's actually important. So doing a warm-up and a cool-down is important to help alleviate some of the risk of getting muscle fatigue, okay? So just like uh, the warm-up is important, the cool-down is important too. So warm-up, you're stretching, and then it's going to speed that recovery in your muscle cells and slowly get them acclimated and ready to um, perform as you need them to. So warming up and cooling down is super important. Also alternating exercise. So not doing like 500 jumping jacks in a row. Do 20 jumping jacks, 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, okay? Alternating the exercises gives those muscles a break in between and you're less likely to have muscle fatigue. Take rest days. So it's important to not be pushing your muscles every single day. Um, ideally, um, you take a day um, or two to help your muscles recover. Now, if you're alternating the muscle groups that you're using, so say um, you're working out at the gym and you're doing um, your um, chest and arms one day, then the next day if you're doing your, um, your back um, and the next day you're doing your legs, you are giving rest to the muscle groups. Okay, so it's not as if you have to have a day or two between all of the exercises, but between the days that you're using those muscle groups. And if it's a more um, intense workout we're using more, then you're going to want to aim for that 24 to 48 hours uh, in between. There are other things that can help with treatment um, and prevention, like caffeine, garlic, uh, ginseng, other multivitamins. Um, but be careful, make sure that you uh, seek medical advice before you start taking something just to make sure it's okay for you. And that's what you should know about using your muscles and muscle fatigue.